Boy, did I have one of the best naps ever. Until... Wake up, sleepyhead. I heard Compound as she woke me in a very surprising way, which got me blushing brightly first thing in the morning. Her hoof slightly pressed against my nose. Such a strange but very warm feeling. I took my time to wake, and my head felt like a train had run right over it. But I was still laying there, sort of half asleep. Come on, you leaf. <laughs> Don't make me tickle you awake. My ears perked up. Tickles. No, the arch nemesis of everything amongst the living. I instinctively held my sides and grinned at her. Morning to you too. It was bright outside. Rays of sun came down the crystal orb. My eyes felt so heavy. I carefully returned the boop to her nose, and she just returned a swift and simple. Oh, well, I guess that means you're wide awake. She winked at me. The way she was treating me, was this her thankfulness, or was this more? What she did fascinated me. I was no expert on the matter of loviness, but I, as always, decided to follow my gut instincts. She could tell my head was far from fine, probably because of me squinting my eyes at even the tiniest speck of light. You may need a sip or two of this, but no more than two. She set down a bottle in front of me, which she had levitated from her saddlebag. I was curious to what this was, and I didn't know what it was for, but I found the intriguing and glowing green light very interesting. It's for headaches. A mixture of a few ingredients. She smiled very proudly. It's my talent to use the resources of this land for chemical purposes. Without further question, I levitated it to my muzzle and had two full swigs of this stuff, and my eyes popped right open. Gosh, that was bitter. Like biting into the peel of a lemon and probably more sour than one. But I couldn't really make out any of the ingredients. I managed to not cough and get it down without murmur, but I had to take a couple of very deep breaths. The outside had become dim, as it usually was, by the time we were out and trotting. We did, however, revisit Dr. Septon and bought some consumables. I was out fresh, and if we really wanted to go out and find those raiders and deal with them head on, we would really need some equipment. She had bought some weird-looking white cubes, as well as some glass bottles and a flask of some chemical, whose name I couldn't pronounce, but I did have a slight clue what it was for. For myself, I bought four healing potions, two magic potions, and the most vital fighting tool in the history of all battles and wars to ever be fought. And two bars of chocolate if you have any. I concluded my order, and while the merchant who specialized in medical equipment and treatment was gone. I earned another huh? look from Compound. You'll see, Compound. I got this. I grinned widely at her, and she returned it by sticking her tongue out. Fine, Your Majesty. She smirked at me, and we both giggled until Septic returned with a small cart containing all the goods. That'll be 200 from you, New Leaf, and 250 from you, Miss. The inner gentle cold could not resist, as I levitated 450 caps, carefully counted, onto his counter. Just as Kampan was going through hers. How oh, well now, Mr. Gentle Horse. She gave me a wide smirk. I started putting away my goods into my trusty saddlebag, when I noticed something out of the back of my head, floating. I looked at Compound and caught her trying to float bits right into my saddlebag. She started to whistle and blush at last. I... I guess it was worth a try. She ruffled my mane and gave me a very playful growl as it sounded. Septic was watching, partially judging and partially with a wide smile on his face. We left after packing our stuff, waving goodbye and ready to do this. Ready to get a step closer to my destiny. We were trotting for quite a few miles, exchanging stories as we went. Me telling her about what it was like where I came from, and how I got to, well, be an alicorn, all down to the more touchy subject. 
the kind which makes you go red, like the sun does in the evening when being asked about them, but I did answer them honestly and authentic as I could. She also came up more, telling me about her past with the raiders, how long they held her captive and all the things they made her do, and how doubt in it all was something that had followed her. Needless to say, the long and boring solo trots of mine seemed to at long last have come to an end. Or so it seemed. Boy did it feel great being outside again. Seeing the different kinds of landscapes were inspiring. Even in their desolate state, they still were unique in their way. The raiders hideout was supposedly near the solar array of New Hope. I at least thought we felt close to there. The dark green grass brushing against our hooves as we kept trotting, exchanging looks. It took me a second or two until it felt something colder than blades of solid nitrogen slicing into my fronts, followed by almost literally bone-crushing pain. I had gotten my front hooves into a bear manicure trap. I desperately tried to wiggle as blood started to run down my fronts and staining my coat. <gasps> Hold still, New Leaf. She bent downwards. Despite the pain it was in, I tried conjuring a teleportation spell to get out. Just as I was about to release my magic, I felt a powerful surge of electricity, or such, surging through my body, and my magic felt drained. I started to pant, and panic a little bit as well. I felt really stupid being stuck here, in what seemed to be a trap for magic users. Just looking at my fronts got me dizzy, but I had plenty of endurance. I could hear voices in the distance. Meanwhile, Compound got a small flask from her saddlebag. Some ponies coming, you might need to hurry. She bent over and started pouring some green and sparkly liquid onto the sides of the set of teeth. And after a while, the metal they were made from started to bubble and eventually started to melt through. A few earth ponies with masks started to get closer behind her. Shucks, they're almost here. I said as the blood loss was really getting to my mind. I started to get a little dizzy, but I had to hang on. If they got me, then what I'd do? I finally got my hooves out of that trap, and Compound turned around to a group, who had obviously somehow known they'd caught a pony. Looks like we got some dimwits ponies! A purple-coated earth pony wearing mainly black clothing and bearing a really big firearm. Honestly, I couldn't tell those things apart. I was sitting on my hinds, my fronts weren't getting me anywhere anywhere, so I needed some sort of recovery. And I needed a potion, but I was out of time to take one right now. That pony who was raising their voice at us was followed by what looked like four ponies. My vision was getting wobbly, but no matter what, even if I perished here, Compound could maybe finish what I started many, many years ago. The other ponies were also earth ponies, some of them with butcher knives. The other ones had some smaller pistols, by the looks of things. I'm sure the boss will love having two unicorns, but we could just fill you with bullets right now. Screw your load. All you're out for is making everyone do your bidding. Your red faces give zero bucks about what's good for every pony. Compot once again managed to speak my mind, but I didn't feel this was the best moment to do so. Or was it? I knew this was going to heat up one way or another. I tried my best to focus on my remaining magic, despite feeling a little exhausted mentally. Can't we just have peace? I looked at their leader. Ha! <laughs> There'll be peace, alright, once you loud mods are decorating the wastelands! Just as he was about to pull the trigger, my horn started to glow and surround me and compound in a bright yellow shield. My breathing got heavier and difficult to do as well. Bullets were fired at the shield. They all bounced off the shield, which started to get cracked though. It was a lot harder to cast a strong spell in this state, but I tried everything my body could handle. I watched Compound, and she tossed a bottle at them. I didn't get what it was until it exploded on an earth pony's face behind them and burst into flames. I could hear screams of pain and agony. I could also feel my heartbeat. As long as it beat, I was alive and awake. I had to protect her. Another throwable came from their back, casting the vicinity into green smoke, which I probably correctly assumed to be poisonous. The shield started to blink as ponies with their knives were swinging away at it, and by the looks there were only two of them left, plus their leader. Tom was running out for me. 
through it. Now or never. Stuck, compound. I muttered, and she lowered her head accordingly. My horn started to glow and sparkle brightly, shooting a lightning bolt. The notable difference this time was that I wasn't holding back as much. Compound looked as the bright and power-filled projectile zoomed right past her and hit the pony with the gun, head on. What happened next was not something for the gore-sensitive ones. His body started to twitch, and the coat turned very black and smelly. His head was steaming, almost like a pot of tea, and eyes and mouth started to leak blood, and a second after. I closed my eyes. I was one of those who weren't too fond of gore, but this was self-defense by any means. I heard more squeals that weren't compounds, as she was cleaning what was left. The other two must have been surprised at what just hit their leader. I opened my eyes, I felt the need to lay down, and used the moment to quickly give myself one of those healing potions I needed dearly. Those do wonders to keep you going for a while, but they can't mend broken fronts, which, honestly, I didn't know if I had or not, plus the blood loss. The last cult stood there, with his weapon in his mouth, gulping. He tried to run. Stress on try. Compound was pretty quick on hooves, and bonked his hat from behind with a hoof right to the dome, and he blanked out. <sighs> I sat there in relief, but we had to go. With him, preferably. Their friends might wonder where this gang disappeared to. I slowly got up, as my front got a little better after I had another potion, but they felt kind of weak. Standing on them was kind of painful. The hideout of these ponies was nothing more than a trench dug into the ground, along with a small underground cave, which was empty and raider free now. Our captive was still out, but tied up very carefully and checked for possible bomb collars. That was not 28 out of a book describing 50 ways on how to tie a powerful knot. Boy did they have a lousy excuse of a bed here, but I had to make do with what there was. We just wanted to rest for a few moments and loot the place before we moved on. The blood loss looked a lot worse than it seemed. A small cup's worth of blood if I had to guess. Enough to make a pony dizzy, but not really life-threatening as I was told. Compound giggled at me as I was going through a bag in their hideout. You're pretty badass for a royal pony, that's damn sure. She nuzzled my sides and almost let out a soft squee. What, m me? Uh, m maybe? Aw, no need to be modest. I'm willing to bet a cider that no prince, goddess, or whatever would be able to focus enough magic to even cast any spell after being stuck in a trap like that. Let alone do what you did. You could have fainted back there, but I guess you didn't care, huh? She got close to my face and stuck her tongue out. You saved me too with that acid of yours. I was pretty sure that, without her being around, I'd already be stuck in some sort of cage by now. And I love the way you told that cult what you thought of their ways. I complimented her. It was truly impressive in my eyes. I never would have been able to say that, even if I thought it clearly otherwise. And back to being adorable and sweet. She chuckled in amusement and got even closer, her nose almost against mine. You're awesome, New Leaf. After a while, grunts and movement were heard. The pony we caught slowly came to wake. His coat was a dark yellow. His cutie mark, a box by the looks of things, and his mane was messy and spiky in terms of mane style. And crimson at that. I also took a mental note about this pony, if I would ever need it later. Ugh, what do you want? He shook his head, then started to look at me in compound. He had our attention alright, with his raspy and deep voice. Answers, that's what I want. I got up from the bed and got closer. For starters, why are you doing this stuff trying to catch other ponies like this? He gave me a smirk. Well, it's how we get control over the wastelands, but you wouldn't know how much grip we got on ya.
Well, you can't rule well by suppression. What about ruling by acceptance? He seemed puzzled on what my last word meant. I could tell. You can whack them all another for power, or settle down. Compound added to my argument. And yes, I'm on my way to give whoever you're working for a piece of what I think. It's your call if you're going to live in fear or peace. I concluded, stepping away from him while I was packing things together. He sat there, and his calm demeanor started to shift. But what if they find out and drag me back and kill me? What if all you're saying is pony manure, and you're just like all of those guys, waiting to backstab someone? And then... Might as well end it now! He started to chew on something. It took me a few moments to get what was happening. Compound pounced on him, hitting the back of his head. Some little gum kind of thing in a wrapper fell out. I kind of had a hunch on what this little treat was supposed to be and started to panic. Please don't. I shook him, tears in my eyes. I was horrible at losing ponies. And the fear of that is what drove me to long periods of isolation as I have gotten to know them. Compound put a hoof around me. It felt so sudden, like some pony waking me from a nightmare. If you really are so too goody, do me a fave and avenge my family. He muttered with what I could tell was his dying breath. As the pony of nature, I knew when something had left the realm of the living. Horse apples. I sobbed into Compound's shoulder as she hugged me. I felt like I messed up. Moments had passed. Hey, goddess, prince, whatever you are, you gave it your all, and that's what matters. I looked into her eyes. Her company felt like a wall between me and getting depressed for a century as it felt. It's hard to unite ponies nowadays, but I think you got what it takes. She patted onto my back, and got packing eventually. After a few nuzzles from her, and returning them, and both of us exchanging blushes at this point, the world felt more in balance than I could ever describe. An avalanche of sorrow was prevented, as I could describe it, but one thing was very clear. That pony's dying breath, his wish, I would take care of it in my very own way. My determination to finish this was unrivaled. Nature is eternal.